Hey, it's a Catawolf here on Guild Rock Season 6. The season is coming to a close very soon. Now's a good time to give you a tour of the base. Let's take a look. So over here we have a solid diamond wolf, because, you know, why not? I have the diamonds. Uh, it took around 16 stacks. So this is our nether portal here. Obviously, uh, this is the base that I have built. We've got max beacons in each of the main materials. And we've got this bridge over to my bamboo and sugarcane farm. So this is powered by a laze. This is based on a prowl design. Yeah, take this one. Here, yeah, hello, hello. There we go. So that allay will go and collect bamboo. Before we do anything though, we need to turn the farm on. So come down here and there is a redstone clock. Sometimes I find the items despawn in here. Or that one here. So just put like some stuff in there. And then flick, what are you doing here? Then flick this lever here, that will turn the note block on up here, which will get the allays to throw everything into here. There we go, Run, went straight past me, down into there. So, the way this is powered, so it's designed to be completely AFK. So, if we have that there, then as the As the bamboo grows up, it gets harvested. Then it stops when it gets to the end. So we have this piece here so that it returns. And the allays will just go and drop all the bamboo down there. So it's the same thing for the sugar cane. And we have these here so that everything goes in here. And then it, it goes through this water stream around here. Not me, over there. No, go over there. There you go. So it produces quite a bit of bamboo each time. You'll probably need a couple of allays to collect everything. And everything gets loaded into these shulkers and then when it fills up, the shulker breaks and it goes into a water stream down into this chest here. So you can see we've got a lot of bamboo, sugar cane, all that. So when you're done, make sure you tie up the allays then come down here and turn the note lock off. And that's all there is to it. So we've got this bridge over here that I have worked on. Pretty happy with how that's turned out. We also have pontoons and all that. Really happy with how this turned out. So let's continue on with the tour. I've got these armor stands on both sides with gold armor and netherite weapons or bows. And then over here, actually come down here, we've got a farm in here. So this is where all my quartz villages are. These guys have all got quartz and I've been selling quartz. This was the original iron farm and as you can see we're underneath here. There is an entrance to my base down there but I'll go through the front door. So if you remember from the start of the season this was where my starter area was. We didn't even change it. So that was the tree farm. We had a cow farm there. Uh, this is where the crops were. And this was the original coastline. <laughs> so on the inside of this base, you can go almost all the way around it. It is blocked off by uh, the stairs on both sides. But if I had more time on this season, I was planning on doing kind of like water elevators up there and then there's space in the towers. So you can do what I was thinking of doing is having some villagers uh, like wheat villages or something up in each of those towers 
up inside the towers up there, uh, having villages in there, but stretching it so then there was basically an iron farm at the top there. So there's plenty of room for all that inside there and it will be far enough removed from any workstation, so it should be good. Okay, so a couple of custom trees. My favorite custom tree is one that I've done over here. This one here, happy with how that turned out. It's nice and it's a little bit raggedy. But down here we have, this one is the drop to the zombie spawner village. And then this one is the drop to my underground base. So we've got my underground base here. You've probably seen a lot of videos shot in this part here. We have all the colors of sheep down here. Originally, the entrance to the sheep farm was over here, but um, reasons of the aquarium I had to move it so it's a fairly standard sheep farm design just that's that so you would just come through there and fill up all the shears across the top row there and uh, you would also have to come down here and give that one a nudge the storage is actually all down there there's a bunch of chests down there but um, I had to block it off because of the aquarium. So we have this axolotl aquarium here. It did have tropical fish and uh, the axolotls kind of ate them all. <laughs> I thought they only ate the fish when you used a bucket of tropical fish. Guess I was wrong. So don't put tropical fish and axolotls together. So then the entrance to the axolotls is down here open that door there so if you're here then you're fine you're not gonna drown and I don't have my aqua breathing helmet so this could be risky but we got our blue axolotl and a bunch of other ones in here so okay we're safe so I'd keep the door closed just to keep the axolotls in this one here is just the entrance to a bunch of mine shafts. Nothing much to see. This one here is the drop to the skeleton spawner area that Praetorian built on like day two, I think it was. And that goes up to it. So I've got a bit of enchanting here. Down here you can get bows and all that. If we come through here, there's the entrance to there's a mine shaft and there's a lush cave, I think. Yep, lush cave system out there, which is fun. And then down here, we have an entrance to, this is where I think it was Benny was doing a whole lot of mining through here. Because I typically prefer to mine at Y54. So we've got lush cave that way and then dripstone cave this way. So it's pretty handy for all the things mine need. So we've got a massive dripstone cave system up there. And if you look real closely. So up there, that is the drop chute and bubble elevator to the zombie spawner village. All right, so through this hallway here, this will take us to the moss farm. And just to orient yourself right there is my underground area. So we've got a moss farm over here. We don't talk about that one. We do have a drowned up there. Um, this was this was attempt number one at the uh, concrete converter. Got a better one. Oh, excuse me. So, a bit of a crafting area. This is where all the moss is. Turn the farm on. You literally just flick this lever here. That's really noisy, so I'm not going to do that right now. Up this scaffolding here is Praetorian's area. That is the back of his storage area in there. And this was the day one mine. So it goes right the way down to the bottom of the world. And that's where we did most of the mining to start with. Come back here. This is my bulk storage area over here. This is the junk chest overflow at the end here. We've got a whole lot of wood, 
a lot of the things that we used over the course of the season. Cobwebs is actually string, and then this one here is gunpowder. Everything else complies with the blocks. This is where we unload stuff. So this one here, if we put spruce logs in here, I'll start firing up there and that'll take it along the bubble column, I'll show you in a sec, along the bubble column through the item filters and end up over there. So the small one here, this is our shulker unloader. You kind of look down here, down there. And if there's no shulker there, then you just press this button here and that dispenses the shulker there and starts the unloading process. So this is on a timer and it releases the uh, blocks individually just so that it doesn't overwhelm the system. Yes, Carrot told me off for unlocking, for having too many unlocked hoppers, but I did my best. And some of them are locked. They, this is a locking system down here. Anyway, so we've got all our bulk chests here. Bit of a green room here, been experimenting with. Did a bit of texturing through there. That's the moss farm on the far side there. And then, oh, someone left a hole. So you, you can see how I like to do my lighting. You can't see much lighting here, but it is all lit up because I do lights with slabs. Uh, some storage in here. I just kind of threw everything in here. Essentially, it is a semi-sorted shulker monster. And I've got a lot <laughs> of stuff. All of those are basically full. So this is the main one with all the good stuff. And anything in my ender chest, I'll probably stick in this one here. And these are just spare shulkers and <laughs> a bit more junk that I've been doing while I've been filming. So up here we have a zero tick kelp farm. Yes, zero tick kelp farms still work. So that there unlocks all these hoppers here. So then hold your ears. goes through here and fills up these. So the way this works, it is on a redstone clock here. You have to make sure that the redstone and the trapdoors are in the correct orientation before you turn it on. So sometimes the plants get broken, you just come along and replant. That's all fine here. Uh, the the trapdoors up the top are waterlogged. If you leave the area and the farm is still running, then you will run into all kinds of issues. The way to fix it, most likely issue is going to be that the sand is going to be down here. Yes, it's happened a few times to me. So you just get all the sand and you put one layer of sand here and then you go in through the top and put another layer of sand on top of the pistons. And that's the bone mill farm. So, over here, this is a playerless tree farm. Let's go grab some bone meal real quick. You grab your bone meal. It's tight squeeze, but uh, that's so that these are in ch inside the right chunks. So, come over here. Bone meal in. Occasionally, uh, it won't start immediately. So you just flick this lever here. Um, sometimes you need to flick the lever and unflick it. So it's a playlist tree farm, which means I don't need to stand here. It will just keep operating. So it does do false fires quite regularly. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Probably an update bug or something like that. So what's happening is it's bone mealing the sapling and then the sapling, when it grows into a tree, if the leaves are blocked, it immediately reverts into a sapling, which allows it to continue to be bone milled. So that's essentially the mechanics behind this particular farm. Right here, uh, it looks like it's a solid log. We right click it. And it's just an update thing. So um, this is a sap this is actually a sapling. It just looks like a log. So in this farm, you can do spruce, birch, and jungle. Birch will give you the best rates. So if you just want wood for reasons, then go with birch. Uh, but the other ones, they produce quite well. Um, you only need a single one of each sapling because it, you don't need to worry about replanting and holding and AFKing and all that kind of stuff. This is one of the best farms. I love this one. So continuing on with our tour. Ah, oh, creeper! Amethyst cave here, just a bit of decoration. And then we've got our dye area over here. This is a 
flower farm. It is Prowl's design. The way that it works. And there, let's put in blue orchid. Why not? Plant the orchid. And then up here, we hit this lever. And there's bone meal up the top there. If it gets stuck on water, you just flick it on and off again. Until it doesn't get stuck with water out. So I find I'm getting around 11 stacks of flowers a minute with this system, which is pretty good. You can't run it for very long, I find, because the grass turns into dirt, which is why there's so much grass around to help it grow back. So you can either let it grow back naturally, or I would keep it on hand some more grass blocks so you can just um, replace them yourself. There are two blue axolotls here. So if you want to breed blue axolotls, that's where you want to go. Bit of a waterfall situation happening here. Got our nether wart and then brewing station over here, all the different things. There's buckets in this gray shulker here for all the lava harvesting that you could possibly want. And these are all filled with lava buckets. Got my wolf down here. That's his bed and my bed. This here. That won't make sense just yet. Let's head down. And down here we have a giant cactus farm. So everything falls down there, comes up a bubble column, and it gets processed here. The cacti come up here, all like that, and then come down here. So we have fuel going into this furnace here. The uh, cacti initially will try and go into the furnace so that we've got all the green dye we could ever possibly need. And then if it doesn't get sucked into there, it gets turned into bone meal automatically just by being in this area. Hello, Blue. So then if we come through here, it takes us to our stonemason villages. And last but not least, we have this stone or cobblestone generator. So you've got to make sure that you release the lock on the hoppers down there. Release this one as well. And then turn on the generator and mine make sure you lock up behind you and i think that's about it for this part of the base next up we have our trading hall so through here we've got a spider spawner if you stand right here this is the afk spot so this is close enough to the spider spawner so that they all start spawning and fall down into this hole here they get pushed by water and then if you just turn on this lever here, the trident killer takes care of them. And then we have a whole lot of string in there. And let's go back here. Through here we have our village. So this is where I've got all the armor and the weapons and tools and everything that I have needed. Uh, these guys here sell golden carrots. This guy here, he sells glistening melons. All the other farmers are golden carrots. So if you need pumpkins or melons or whatever, this farm here. All the books you could possibly need. So all the, all the good stuff. Where there is a bookshelf above a villager means he sells bookshelves and glass means he sells glass. So you can see we've got all the good stuff here. And a sugarcane farm. This is just for the small scale stuff. So we have a zombie spawner here. Beds here. Villager there who can see the beds. If you want more villagers, put more beds there. These guys are the breeders. The mechanic that we're taking advantage of here, it's a bedrock exclusive. Whenever a zombie villager is spawned in a spawner, then it automatically gives all the villagers within 16 blocks a nice healthy discount. So we haven't done any curing of these villagers and look at the prices. One emerald. So there's been no curing. That has just been from the zombie villager spawning. It usually takes a couple of zombie villagers to spawn before they get full discounts. So we've got all our clerics here, got more clerics here, lots and lots of clerics. And then we've got even more stonemasons around here. Down here takes you... So we initially implemented a collection area for the um, rotten flesh, but with going in and out and relogging and everything, it was just proving to be impossible to keep the minecart working. So then through here, this is where a lot of my mining has been done. So 
these tunnels here extend for thousands of blocks in that direction. If you head out that way, you can literally do a tour of the uh, entire build area. So if you were to look under this base in spectator mode, it's just Swiss cheese down there. So that's it for this part of the base. This vaulted ceiling, pretty happy with how this has turned out. The flooring, look if I'm being totally honest, I was just showing off how many diamonds I've got. It's not the nicest design, but it works, <laughs> ish. So over here we have Benny's area. And uh, for those who don't know, Benny hasn't been on in a while. And so uh, his area is a little overgrown, as you can see. How did that happen? I don't know. Here is Praetorian's base, looking fantastic. And he's a much better builder than me. And I'm not even slightly jealous of how awesome this has turned out. <laughs> Check this out, it's ridiculous. This is my favorite feature here. He's got his water fountain. Like, seriously dude? How good is that? And then there's like a nice section out the back here. Man, I haven't seen this. This is looking fantastic. Look at that. <laughs> oh wow, how did he do that? This is what you can do when you're an actual decent builder. <laughs> Random zombie. So then up here we have my combination farm. The drowns spawn in here. And we collect our loot in there. Simple trident killer. Pretty basic design. AFK for both the squid farm and for the drown farm is here anywhere in here it doesn't really matter so this is where the squid spawn so you just send the minecart off with this lever here it goes and collects everything while you're afking up the top and all the ink sacks get into there now we also have this fish farm here which didn't really end up doing much with it's all set up there's a trident killer down there at the bottom probably should have because Dicky showed me his design and he's got a um, it's basically the exact same thing as what I've got here uh, but it is fantastic and it produces like a lot of bone meal. Over here there's a drop to an amethyst cave and that's about it for this area. I forgot while I was over here down here is the concrete converter. So all we need to do to get this concrete converter working is we flick this lever down and look here and hold down the right mouse button or the use key. And you can build an awful lot of concrete with this area here. So that's it for the Roman area. Let's have a look at some of the other spots. Some of the secrets I've been hiding. So if we wanna to go to the nether hub, to where everyone else is, shopping district, all that kind of stuff, we head that way. If we wanna to head to the guardian farm, come through here. Bed, ender chest, anvils, all that good stuff. So we just head out here. Now, this is not working because the admins are doing some filming, so mob spawning is off. So you just flick this lever here, all these trident killers fire. And then you just come up here, stand on this light here, and all the drops come through there. We have a lot. So this is probably the best XP source in the game currently for us, uh, because we can't use like portal ticking farms, for example. Uh, too much lag for everyone. So that's the direction back to our base. But if we go through this portal, don't mind my redstone testing, go through this portal here, and this will take us to the raid farm. Yeah, sometimes I get caught on that. So at Z500, that'll take you to the gas farm. We'll deal with that later. And you know it's the raid farm because of all the Arctic foxes. So, raid farm is here. 
So to start this up, you hit this one here to start that trident killer, um, that one there to start this trident killer. So this is a two spawn spot pillager outpost. So we've got some pointed dripstone here because sometimes uh, we, the ravages glitch out and land on this here. So by using the dripstone there, that kills them when they fall because somehow they're able to survive that massive fall. So, whereas I can't. So all the drops from the farm go into some leaves down there to line them up and then go into there. I'll show you the sorting system in a sec. So then up here we have a trident killer. To throw the trident, you go into here, break all the, break these blocks there and you'll be able to get into where the trident is. So this is a design that has gone through a bunch of different iterations. It's a single village raid farm though, so it's nothing like the 24 stack or the eight stack raid farms that I built on this server. Those were for other people. Make sure you have boats there because the vexes like to spawn and the boats catch them. So then the AFK spot for this farm here is right here. So we have a snowy village. Down here is the sorting system. Uh, those junk ones fill up, it automatically fires everything into lava. Over here is where I've been doing my wither mining. Don't worry, there's no wither down here. At least I don't think so. So it's a jump into water. Just don't press any buttons. So this is home base. I'll leave a whole lot of potions and things in here. So then if we come through here, might recognize this space as where I fought the wither. This was this was where I fought the wither in the is the wither the best miner <laughs> video. That was right there. I've got a couple more tunnels down there. Honestly, it's a fantastic mining method. That was a failed experiment. <laughs> so back in this direction to 500. So that way towards the zero that way it leads directly to the tunnel that connects in with the north tunnel so if you want to get to it this way without going the back way then come this way otherwise let's go see the gas farm So we've got a little area here with all supplies and all kinds of stuff there's like a lot of stuff here. And then this is where the ghasts spawn. So these there's trident killers up there. Then we have redstone connecting through here. There's granite block here. This is the AFK spot. So if you stand here, all the all the areas that's all spawn proof, there's slab literally everywhere to maximize the amount of spawns of ghasts. So from these two, I get around two shulkers an hour of gunpowder. So you turn that one on, turn that one on. I usually close myself in at both of those there and then you just kind of AFK at this spot here. You get all your shulkers of gunpowder. So these here are literally just activator rails that are turned on with a lever and then the carts do this so when a gas spawns here they get fired up right up into the trident killers. So if it breaks it's probably because you don't have this on subtract mode. So this is the redstone clock that fires all the tridents. So you have to make sure that there is a minecart in here that will keep the gas in place while you are uh, while it's killing them. So then you aim there and fire. So if you, I'm not sure if you're able to see, but a lot of these places you have the black outline. If that happens, it's going to do that. So if it's flipping up, it's because you're not in the right spot. Get in the right spot and throw it, and then trident killers will work. So we can take this tunnel all the way back to. Oh, jeez. We can take this tunnel all the way back to the north tunnel. It's hard to fly without crashing when you don't have the. Uh, you did it. Yay. So don't let this fool you. 
<laughs> Hidden entrance. Yeah. So this here is the end of the north tunnel. So if you see my coordinates, it is at zero X. So back that way is the way back to the base. And this way takes us to the netherite, uh, ancient debris. So we keep going to 950. Take this boat all the way down every thousand blocks. So we're at 600 now. Every thousand blocks there is a entrance to the mine shaft. Let's get on this side so we don't crash. All right, there's one down there. And then further down this way, go all the way. The last one is at 3000. I recommend using a chest boat simply because, sorry about the mouse, simply because uh, it means you don't pick up any mobs. And we're right over this massive lava lake. Yeah, that was a hairy drop. All right, so this is the furthermost base of operations. And here, and turn left, and this will take us to the netherite ball. The ancient debris ball. So this is the bore. Salty built it, but honestly the number of times that it's broken and I've rebuilt, I don't know that there's any components left that he built. <laughs> oh jeez. TNT goes in there, uh, you shoot an arrow of there, I'll show you in a sec, and then it moves all of these and then uh, every second one it fires TNT fire an arrow at this target here and then we've got to make sure that we move this way because otherwise it's not inside the render distance so that all fires and then so that was the first time and then we do it again and it'll fire the TNT so if it ever gets stuck through this point the best thing to do is just to use a lever and to make the pistons move so you want, when you're operating this, you want to be careful of the, well, you've got to clear out the lava and you've got to make sure that, for example, down here, I've seen that there is some gravel. So this gravel should be fine. Um, when it's in between here, you just want to make sure that it doesn't get stuck to the slime, otherwise it will stop it at that point there. You also got to check above for particularly blackstone or for ores. Um, sometimes they can get caught on the top and the ones getting caught at the top, that's, that's the worst one because those are the ones that will actually explode. Whereas if this bar here gets caught, then it will just stop the rest of it from moving forward and you can use a lever and kickstart it to clear the obstruction. This tunnel here is like 3000 blocks long and each of the entrances has lights over them but they're at exactly the thousandth block other than this one here because i made a mistake so then if we come to the end of this tunnel here if we turned right that would take us back to civilization and to the nether hub but we're going to turn left and i'll show you the 24 stack raid farm that dickie and i built this way off to the right now is Dickie's um, massive gunpowder farm he's got an industrial district down there so this here this is Siggy's ridiculous perimeter area I have to go through this to get to the raid farm so here's the raid farm. This is where all the so this is where all the raids spawn. We've got the villagers here with all the bells and everything. And then the workstations over here. There's a village breeder at the bottom of that roller coaster over there. spent so much time here. 
So something I forgot to show you is something that I don't know that even Prajori knew about. So this is the location of where I get all my sand. So just to orient you, that's the way to the Guardian Farm and to the Raid Farm. But if we continue along this area here, and we've got to go to 350. So, here we go. I always close it up behind me. Even though there's no one on. <laughs> so it's one rocket down here. Now there's entrances to open nether here. Just be careful. There's all kinds of things there. There's other things in this direction. Uh, this is where the sand is. So I've cleared out basically <laughs> an entire desert worth of sand. All this area on the outside. Many, many shulkers. There's a desert village over here. So you can see where I finished. <laughs> desert village over here that I cleared all the sand out from underneath and then over here is a warm ocean biome there we go wonder who's been here if you bone meal this spot here all the coral grows so, so down here this is where I got all my coral for the axolotl and there's all kinds of tropical fish down here. It's amazing. Up here, there's a portal that takes you to Azerion or whatever they call AZ. And that's about all there is to see over here. So I collect all my sand with, hey Scotty's on. Hey Scotty, 1300, good job Scotty. So, I collect all my sand with a laze. I find that's the easiest way to collect a whole lot of sand really quickly. So, let's go through here. Let's have a look at the Christmas district. Over here is the Christmas build that Praetorian and I worked on. There's a secret bed over here if you have a need. So, yeah, unfortunately Jeff's gone. Praetorian has packed up and taken off on a rocket ship out of this world, so he took Jeff with him. And unfortunately it seems he took the trigger as well, which means I can't play the Silent Night for you that I was hoping to sad but if you want to see that down this trapdoor here this is where the silent night machine lives so i think it's i think it's one i think it's one of these blocks here might be that one i'm pretty sure it's one of these four blocks if you put a lever on there and turn it on, then it will trigger a silent night to play. So then, this is all the rest of the Christmas district. That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the Christmas event. And then, up here is where we collect all the, <laughs> all the gravel that we use to supply the server. As you can see, not much gravel's left. Let's go check out shopping district. Here we are been so convenient being this close to shopping district. So the Roman shops, we have Roman sand and gravel. This is where we have, we have gone through many, many shulkers of all this here. Yeah, come around here. This is our boardroom. 
So Praetorian built this space, as you can see, because it's way better than what I would have done. So then we use these chests here to distribute all our profits from all the shops, and there was a lot of profits. And then we have this mossing around, the moss shop that I built to supply all the moss and mossy, co mossy cobblestone and stone and everything through there. We've got the giant trident that I built. This was my most recent build in the shopping district, just selling tridents. With my drown farm, I was able to sell tridents really cheaply. It's too bad that I wasn't earlier on in the season when everyone's setting up their trident killers. So all the different concrete in here. So we started off at different prices, but we ended up settling on a diamond per stack. And then down here we had all our quartz and trident ink sacks and all that sort of stuff. The quartz was extremely good. So if you're playing an SMP, I would highly recommend selling quartz. So I was selling quartz for a diamond per stack. And lots of people bought it. So my last shop is down here. This was the one that I bought from Salty, the Get Right Netherite. This one here. So Salty built this store. He was, he was selling just netherite ingots, I think. Um, I added the ancient debris, which was really popular. Uh, I recommend selling that one because people use it for balls and decorations and all kinds of stuff. And then selling the netherite tools. And I'm so sad that with 1.20, it's gonna be so much more difficult to get netherite tools. Armor, sure, but netherite tools, leave that system as it was. Okay, so in here there is a secret entrance. Initially, if you filled this cauldron with water, then it would fire off, and I'll show you how to reactivate that. But the current version, stand on this plate, throw one out there so that this pressure plate gets activated. And then over here, press this button, and stand back and watch. So then I've set it so that it automatically closes here. The Salty built this one and here. There was a music box connected into here, but uh, I unhooked it while I was trying to do some other stuff and didn't re-hook it up. So this is all here. So when you press the button that fires this one down here, it operates on an AND gate. So when this torch is burnt out and this one's out, then that turns on and this is our delay sequence here so that the door closes automatically. But this line here goes to that cauldron that I was talking about and that's pretty much all that is to it. Let's close this back up. Button to call the stairs. Just watch out because it will automatically close. So if you want, so, so if you want to use that cauldron, you will need to come around here, break that block there, and then right here we need a comparator. So the comparator is reading this cauldron here. And then when you put this block back here, a comparator will send the signal through there and then you can use it as a trigger. So Let's have a fly around and have a look at the shopping district. It's really come a long way. We have stadiums. We have all sorts of different shops selling all sorts of different things. Statue of Scotty. This is Dickies. We've got a bank here. Bank's really cool. Check this out. So there's like an entire vault down there that gets called up with specially designed key cards and all that. Sam designed the redstone behind that. Luckily built the elevator and then Captain and Eggnog did all the design and came up with the concept. Really cool work. It's a massive team effort. 
guys should be very proud of themselves for that, even though unfortunately it was too late in the season and it didn't really get operational. And I think Luckley built the logo, which is looking sweet. We got Falcon's floating house. Floating house, that's uh, that's where he was selling his rockets. Then we got Bob. I think he sold different floors on there. And this gorgeous racetrack, my word. How good is that? If I finish my filming in time, I might have a go on there. <laughs> they haven't really mob proofed it, have they? So this is Shopping District. Unfortunately, the world's coming to an end very soon. Ah, oh, this dragon here. Hicks was selling this stuff for ridiculously cheap. 24 ender chests for a single diamond. Yeah, there you go. One diamond, 24. He did some ridiculous farms. So, this is Shopping District. Roman Temple. Uh-oh. <laughs> that was my last rocket. So, let's head over to Spawn and check that out. See where that's up to. Got the amphitheater, got the Roman church that Praetorian and I built. Oh, we call it a Roman church, it's actually Spanish. This is based on a church in Madrid. So, nice chandeliers. And then, if we come around here. out here and you can see the congregation then up the top from the belfry we can see all of spawn so this has been a huge amount of work by everyone A lighthouse, even. Oh, this is brand new. Haven't seen that one before. Oh, me. <laughs> oh, I don't have my armor on. That's not good. It's alright, it's getting light. Ah yes, this is Barnes' place here. I think I might end up hanging up my armor in here. I'll go away, zombie. Barnes built this one just like in half a day or something silly. We might claim one of these. Okay, go. Redstone for a Catawolf. What else we got? Dicky, Conman, Praetorian, Luckily, Joe Buffalo, Captain, Super Collide, Akimitsu, me, April, Scotty Hunter, Nano, Josh, Donut, Falcon, Carrot. Hmm. I think Ewan had gone by the time I joined. Long Ears, Barnster, Hicks, Seggy, Aaron. Aaron had also gone by the time I joined. Salty, Seb, who'd also left. Rocket, Edith, and Tenya. We've got some more around this side, I think. Here we got Pat. There's Hakon. Golden. Whoop. Oh, Sam's the diamonds. Golden. And then Lavender Mama Jess. There's a bunch of people missing from that list there. The slackers. Like, I didn't see Cyclone on here. Cyclone, where you at? Hmm. And I only see Captain, I don't see Eggnog. Oh, this is what I was looking for. <laughs> Colourful sheep. 
Well, thanks for coming on this tour with me. Hope you've enjoyed having a look at our world. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one.